Well, I'm not. I, I agree. I'm just saying, like, because we get beat up all the time about legacy stuff, but like that one doesn't get talked about enough to me. Oh man, uh, I talk about it plenty. <laughs> like that's the, so when it comes to quarterback recruiting, the reason that it's difficult to argue with Riley is because you could check the receipts, right? That's the reason it's difficult. I can argue about Tom Herman all day because Greg Ward is playing wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, not quarterback. Even as they still have a need at quarterback, and they're not looking at him. They brought in a dude that's coaching high school football to play quarterback rather than just let Greg Ward get back there and cook because they don't trust him. I'm saying that it's got as much to do with Tom Herman as it does with his quarterbacks because that has been the one thing that we can point to. None of his quarterbacks end up playing the NFL as quarterbacks. And your man Sam Ellinger is built like a halfback. That's that's not that's just what it is, right? Now, if he could play the position, play the position. I disagree with that. I mean, he's 6'3", 225. Have you seen his lower half? Down. Yeah, he's got a big lower half. That boy got a, wrong with that, that boy's got Earl Campbell booty. You acting like he's he a, got a Earl Campbell booty with a junk butt, but man. Got, like, come on. Look, look, you sit a Coke bottle on it. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> I seen. Look, I'm at Big Twelve Media Days last year. Your man shows up in Wranglers and boots and and the and, and the polo, right? And he's got such moxie and he's got such belief in himself. And that's one of the reasons I really love him as a person, right? Period. But I'm looking at these thighs coming out of these jeans, and I'm like, how does nobody line this man up seven yards deep? How does that not happen? They do it anyway. Like they run half back snap to him anyway, and then they ask him hey. to throw the football and expose himself. I know we don't want to stay here the whole conversation, but I, I, I think Sam's – look, Sam Allen, go back and watch the Texas-LSU game from last year. And LSU escaped an ass whooping, by the way. I just want to throw that out there this year to, to the LSU fans. Uh, LSU fans, send this. all your hate mail to my man um, Steven over at Fanatics <laughs> Perspective. They already Come hate through. me. They already hate me. Come through. <laughs> Come through because they escaped. They got off the hook. But when Sam Ellinger was out there – and you, and you, as well as I know, all the NFL dudes, Christian Fulton and Grant Delpit and Ja'Cory Stevens and Calavion Chason are all out. Jacob Phillips, who was hurting my beloved Cowboys this week, and Patrick Queen and Stingley, who might be better than all of them, is, are out there. Is. And he dotted them up yep. for 400 plus, throwing through tight windows, skinny pose, out route, everything. He did it. He did that. That was that. That was the same quarterback that you're saying is a halfback so, that can't so, spin it against NFL dudes. So the 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 issue I have right is and 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 I'll I'll leave it here. We get off of, off of it. I look at Jalen Hurts, and I see a dude whose ceiling is always going to be him, right? Which is to say that he's always in a, been in a position where he's had dynamic skill players, just awesome skill players, and he ends up getting a hook for Tua Tagovailoa in the second half of the mm-hmm. national championship game because he can't make those throws, okay? I watch a man against Texas Christian not make those throws to dudes that are 6'3", like Brendan Eagles, to dudes that are 6'6", right? And, and I'm going, why doesn't why doesn't Texas just run 6'3", 6'3", 6'7", 6'6", the whole day? What the hell is wrong with running Andrew Wiley and Malcolm Epps on the field at the same damn time and give Sam Ellinger the biggest possible catch radius? Because I do agree with this. Jake Smith uh, is, is dropping too many passes. Like, he's open. He's open. And with his speed and his He wiggle, looked like somebody who hadn't played in, in a month. Right. So like, And what, that's fair. I mean, he, he was dealing with some stuff with the hamstring and whatnot. Like, he's, he's ramping back to where he needs to be. I mean, he looked like he'd been out. You put Malcolm Epps in there, all of a sudden you're scoring touchdowns. I agree with the personnel decisions. Okay. All right. All right. I agree with that. All right. I'm, I'm, and I think that if if Sam was maximizing all of the skill players around him, none of these games would be close. They'd all look like UTEP, right? Because you got you got Roshan who was found money because he ain't supposed to be no tailback, and yet there he is, right? Keontae, okay, hang on a damn ball. I'm not a big fan of Keontae Ingram, but that's you know all of my stuff is Roshan's just better. And then you got Bijan. Whom everybody knows I love. Everybody knows I love that dude. He's got nine rush attempts him. in three games. Nine? Hand him the he football. Got, yeah, I mean, he almost died in the Texas Tech game. I saw so that. I'm just happy the I'm just happy the brother is still <laughs> alive and with us. Uh so I'm not gonna fault the coaches for saying, hey, we might wanna be responsible here because this is the same coaching staff that got heat 
when we put Sam Ellinger back in the game after in his freshman year when he was clearly concussed. So I'm not going to bash them for erring on the side of caution in yo, regards man. to B. John Robinson. It was a running joke for so long. It's like, yo, man, Sam don't look good. Why do they keep doing this I'm, to this man? So we can't beat them up for saying, oh, Bijan didn't play this week. And Roshan Johnson got injured in the TCU game. That's another thing that, um, you know, so so J- Joshua Moore, because this is going to factor into our preview, right? So Joshua Moore goes down with a, bo- with a bone bruise or contusion or what have you. Okay. You have Jake Smith in there who is working back from being out and being injured. It's his, essentially his first game uh, of the season. You have, you know, now Brennan Eagles was there. Tariq Black, I don't know what's going on in that situation. Yeah, honestly. what is going on with that? I don't, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> like, throw that man the ball. Like, what's he, what do you mean he didn't play? For what? He on the sideline. He don't have the COVID. He there. Throw him in the all but, right. but, but I say all that, I say all that to say who out there that was in that TCU game against, and I think you're underrating TCU's defense, by the way, and some of the brothers they have on that side of the ball. You mean the Gary same Patterson Garrett Wallow about. that gave up the big play that could have let Texas win the game? I'm underrating him. He wasn't he first team all Big Twelve uh, linebacker. Say, say, isn't this the guy that? Say, isn't this the guy that everybody's dog. telling me is this? Say dog. This this. <laughs> say dog. <laughs> first of all, the Big Twelve is a Sun Belt property. Second of all, I think that you have a point in that Texas Christian defense is good, but they were poorly coached in that game too. Like they were poorly coached the, in that game. Like the third. They were down poorly was, coached. Golly, I'm thinking. I'm looking. Gary Patterson picking up penalties on his own. You got Doug Meacham out here calling wild third down plays, and they're constantly out of position. And you're throwing Max Duggan out there like his name is Sam Ellinger just trying to get him killed. Like, I kept looking at Juwan Mitchell going, oh, he's going to destroy somebody. And then they get him tossed out of the game on what I thought was, look, if you're going to take back the targeting, you can take back the ejection. I hate that rule. And I, I, I really do. Terrible rule. And I thought, But that's that, Big 12 refs for you. But Juwan Mitchell week. is that dude. Like, I didn't know that he was going to be that dude in the middle, right? I know about a DOA, right? I, I know about him. And I know about the secondary, right? I'm a Kurt Caden Stearns truther, right? I still think that if you run that three-man front, you're doing yourself a disservice. Unless your goal is to make Oklahoma run the football. Because if your goal is to make Oklahoma run the football, you might be able to win the game. Because I can't tell you how unsettling it is to see an OU football team that can't run it. Like, one dude averaging better than five yards per carry. Texas got three. You're not averaging Y'all better. are averaging, what, 3.8 yeah, on the as, season? Right, right, right. As a team? Right, right, right. And this is a squad Jeez. that routinely goes for 200 a game, right? 300-yard rushing games aren't, right. aren't new. So I'm looking at it going, if I'm Chris Ash, fine, cool. I'm just going to make them throw the ball. Because if I force Rattler into bootlegs and sprint outs because the offensive line can't protect him, I'll take that. Because I like my secondary up against OU's wide receivers better than I like the idea of perhaps giving him man-to-man and stacking the box. Stack the box for what? They can't run the football. So from that standpoint, I'm going, how does Chris Ash manage to mess this up? Because I know how Oklahoma can mess it up defensively. We've seen that the last two weeks, like second so halves and fourth quarters. Run game stuff has to be accountable accountability with the players up front in the front seven. Now, Juwan Mitchell will be there. We a day is out for the season because oh. he's gonna have to have oh yeah he's gonna have to have a shoulder surgery per per Tom Herman. Did, did Herman so, say that yesterday? Yeah. Okay, that's my bad. So that's my bad. Yeah, no, nah, you, no, nah, you're good. You're good. He it it was he he went down because he came in for Juwan Mitchell right, and then he went down and, and then and Court Jack they was thought they were, Yeah. Okay. So that's gonna be the crew in, in the middle, um, but. When I say man for man, because I have some matchups that I want to see. Like, I want to see Creed Humphrey versus Keandre Coburn. I think that's a fun matchup. I don't want to see that. (laughs) I don't want to see that. Look, 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 look. Why not? uh, All right, let me me run this out, okay? (laughs) Damn it, Creed. Um, (laughs) So, so last year, going into last year, Creed Humphrey's supposed to be coming out draft eligible, right? One of the premier interior linemen in college football and one of the handful that you could expect to get drafted in the first round, which is a really big deal. And the same year that Kyler Murray is named the starting quarterback at Oklahoma, Lincoln Riley says, the most talented football player on our team 
is not Kyler Murray. The most talented football player on our team is Creed Humphrey. Now, one of my best friends played NFL for 10 years, right, and played center, guard, tackle. He's just that dude. And he was looking at Creed in the Kansas State game in particular, said, what happened to him? Because he used to be nasty, and he used to be able to eat up these defense tackles. But even last year, when he is quite literally the most talented football player on the field, Bravion Roy is destroying him. Again, Baylor had him just folded up in both games. Texas Christian runs Tyler Shelvin at his face, and he can't actually hang. So the idea of a dude as big as Bravion Roy and Tyler Shelvin, whose nickname is Snacks, going against Creed Humphrey does not make me feel good. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't what I want. That ain't what I want. And, you know, like, that's before I start talking about the depth chart. Like, I'm fascinated with the talent that ends up at Texas because I like Alfred Collins, but I like Vernon Broughton more. And I'm going, man, they only going to get better. It's about developing. So you want to see Creed Humphrey versus Keandre Coburn, and I don't for exactly the reasons that you do. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, uh, the, hey, hey, that's, that is that is 1,000% justified. Um the thing, though, is we, we have to be able to, to stop the run, that, you know, interior without having to add additional resources. And there's going to be some things schematically that Chris Ash is going to have to mix up because uh, I think one of the big misconceptions with Spencer Rattler, like, like and you, you've actually been good at pointing this out. I'll give you credit for this. Is like, hey, as athletic as he is, he's not a runner uh, per se, no, right? Like, no. but people keep getting this thing mixed up, right? And so one of the things that's really hurt Texas last week was Max Duggan just being used in quarterback run game straight up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if OU is going to go to that well because the same way that they did with like a Jalen Hurts or even a Kyler Murray. I don't see that being the case. I think it's going to be more off of a scramble or if he's rolling out and sees a little bit of a gap. But is he going to be running quarterback draw after you guys spread everything out? Probably not. Um, you always have to be on guard for anything. But – one of my concerns that I saw last week again with our defense was the outside zone stuff and a lot of the stretch stuff and the jet sweeps that TCU just destroyed us with. Because you look at TCU in the Iowa State game, they didn't even break 100 yards rushing, but against us, they ran for over 200 when we thought we have a very good run defense. But so much of that yardage came on the perimeter. So one of the things I would be – trying to take advantage of if I was Lincoln Riley is the perimeter of our defense because we haven't been very sound with outside containment 